Greetings. Oops, they did it again. Opez, finally referred to as Oops, has a massive new six kilowatt home backup flagship called the Guardian 6000 that promises to offer more bang for the buck compared to the bigger name brands. But is it any good? Let's find out. The Guardian packs a 4608 watt hour LFP battery rated 4,000 cycles to 80% capacity. That means this ain't no backpack in product as it measures 25 by 16 by 17 inches and clocks in at just over 111 pounds. The display is new for the Guardian model and packs 32 pieces of information on screen showing everything you need to know including input output watts, time to charge discharge, battery percent display with icons and so forth. As for the inverter, the Guardian rocks a 6,000 watt pure sine inverter capable of dual voltage operation, both 120 and 240 volt split phase simultaneously. Now the inverter on this is either on or off. There is no separate 120 or 240 volt setting here. One thing they didn't oops on was offering a ton of hookup options. Basically everything you could ever want, starting with four standard 20 amp AC outlets and a TT30R 30 amp RV hookup. Both of those are 120 volt. For 240 volt split, you get a NEMA L1430R twist lock, a NEMA 1450R or 50 amp appliance RV hookup. And finally, for straight 240 volt, a NEMA 620R outlet. The last one is used for things like 240 volt compressors and such. Seriously, you'll probably never need an adapter or dog bone with this power station. As for ways to charge, you have your typical four ways from AC power with the included 20 amp cable up to 1800 watts will top you up in about three hours. You can also charge from 240 volts, but they did not provide that cable for me to test. They claim at 240 volts, you can top up in 84 minutes, which is pretty crazy. You can of course charge from solar panels with a built-in MPPT controller via Anderson power pole connector on the side using this included, but very short MC4 adapter cable. It does have only one controller, but with a wide voltage range supporting from 12 volts all the way up to 140 volts, 15 amps with a hard cap of 2100 watts. The limitation here is you can't 12 volt and solar charge simultaneously, and 15 amps does get used up pretty fast with a single controller. The key here is to run solar panels in series, as close to the 140 volt max that you can, then add a second identical string in parallel in order to hit that 2100 watt cap. At 2100 watts, you can top up in under three hours, assuming the stars perfectly align and you have the perfect setup. In reality, expect to add a few hours. Last and least, you can charge from 12 volt vehicle at a snail's pace of 100 watts, meaning your weekend trip will be over before you even top back up again. However, you can AC and solar charge simultaneously at a right quick 3,800 watts, useful if you have a generator and are trying to top up fast in an emergency under 90 minutes. The 6000 does offer a pair of 12 volt outputs. One is the typical 10 amp cigarette lighter car socket, good for 10 amps. The other is an XT90 rated at 30 amps. The XT90 can be switched from 12 to 24 volts with the switch here. And oddly, they do not include the cable adapter for this output. Shame because I wanted to test it and even I don't keep XT90 pigtails laying around. It's something others rarely use and when they do, they just give you the adapter. As for USB, it is minimal as you'd expect from a home backup design. It offers a pair of USB-A quick charge ports and a single 140 watt USB-C port. I'm glad they went with a new 140 watt protocol didn't cheap out here as a lot of the newest products can charge at that rate. The Guardian does have two built-in battery expansion ports on the side for expanding the battery capacity of the product up to 41 kilowatt hours using their own expansion batteries. Opez offers a class-leading six-year warranty on this product, and that's kind of insane coming from a value-focused brand. Kudos to them for taking on that risk. And of course, we took the Guardian 6000 here into my secret laboratory where we performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including a single-fisted battery capacity test. The results of the AC battery capacity test, it scored 3,890 watt hours out of 4,608 under a 0.2 C inverter load for a very average result of 84%. As for the AC inverter consumption test, I left the unit on with the inverter enabled, Wi-Fi turned off for a full 24 hours and it used 38% of the battery according to what it said on screen. 38% of 4,608 is about 1,750 watt hours wasted or approximately, wait for it now, 
73 watts of idle consumption for the inverter. Woo wee! When recharged via solar port back to 100%, it took a whopping seven hours to recharge the battery at 10 amps and consumed 1,870 watt hours according to my battery meter. Since it used 1,870 to recharge instead of 1,750, we divide those two to get a very good 94% efficiency of the MPPT controller. That means only 6% of the power going to solar is wasted to heat. That happens to be one of the best results of tested to date when it comes to MPPT efficiency. So if you left this inverter on at 73 watts of idle consumption, it would totally kill the 4.6 kilowatt hour battery in only 2.6 days. That happens to be some of the worst results I've recorded for a home backup generator. Typically three to five days is average. The problem is of course the idle consumption. 73 watts of idle consumption out of a 6,000 watt inverter is not very good. That's more power wasted than my entire whole home 12 kilowatt inverter running my property. But on the other hand, 94% efficiency of the solar controller is very good. So at least whatever power you burn to heat up the room that this thing is in can at least be gotten back rather efficiently through solar charging. Now I'm always asked how long stuff's gonna run compensating for usable capacity that we just figured out. You can pause this chart I'm gonna put up here on screen. You can see approximately how long common appliances will run on this particular unit. Now onto the rest of the results. Side wave check under load has scored 120 volts, 60 hertz, and 240 volts at 60 hertz, that was a pass. Inverter capacity test, it's a little tricky to get it to run over 6,000 watts, but I did manage with multiple heaters and multiple power stations, and a few tweaks here and there. We're able to push it to 6,600 watts, for just under five seconds, that was a pass. As for the cooling ability heat soak test, we're able to run it at 6,000 watts for five minutes, no problems, no funky smells, sounds, tastes, or flavors. Now as for the fan noise under max load, it was 59 decibels, which is kind of loud. I'm afraid you're just too darn loud. Next place. All right, because there's a 2400 watt limit on the outlets, I was curious, will it still run our 15 amp saw? This is the test I hate the most because it's very loud. Let's give it a try. Watch the wattage right there. All right, it seems to run the 15 amp saw with no problem. I was not able to perform the air conditioning test because it was 20 degrees outside at the time. Air conditioner will not kick on if it's that cold outside. So the Guardian does have a switch on the side by the AC input that lets you switch between fast charging and charging at whatever speed you want in the app. This screen of settings is all you get. That is all the settings for the entire product. They do offer a slider bar from 200 to 1800 watts so you could slide it anywhere you like. On the lowest setting, it's charging at just under 200 watts. I don't hear anything coming out. Fan-wise, it sounds like the fans have completely turned off. So let's slide it up halfway to 1,000 watts. Here's where you have to wait. It takes a very, very long time for this thing to tick up to whatever speed that you want to charge. So you just basically have to wait. Even at 1,000 watts, it's still... The fan is turning, but it's, it's so low, I'm never gonna be able to record it on my sound pressure level. Uh, let's go ahead and crank it all the way up to 1800 watts, the maximum charge rate from AC outlet. Okay, there we are at 1800 watts. The fan sped up slightly, but it hasn't really increased. Now maybe if it's running for a long period of time, the fans will turn on louder and make it louder, but this is actually the first time this power station's been quiet. So when you're AC charging, it's not too bad. Now this does charge at 240 volts, but that charging cable was not supplied. As for the solar input range, MPPT, it is claimed to be 12 to 140 volts, 15 amps, 2100 watts. As tested at 12 volts, we're able to pull 100 watts, 24 volts, 343 watts, 48 volts, 700 watts, 60 volts, 890 watts, 80 volts, 1200 watts, 120 volts, 1800 watts, and the max I was able to hit was 139 volts at 2050 watts. So technically this is a pass, but I was unable to actually hit 140 volts because as soon as you hit 140 volts, it cuts the amps on you. I was not able to get 2100 watts exactly either, but 2050 is close enough. Now as for the charging fan noise at AC maximum, it was virtually silent at below 44 decibels. At AC minimum, 200 watts, it was silent. I didn't hear their fans at all. And under solar, it was still kind of loud at 57 decibels. The Guardian does support simultaneous charging. We're able to pump in 2000 watts of solar plus 1800 watts of AC for 3800 watts of solar priority charging. So the claim milliseconds on this UPS mode is 20 milliseconds, they call it EPS. 
YouTube's most controversial test, the UPS test for uninterruptible power supply. This thing has a switching UPS mode in it that's supposed to keep your computers and electronics online during a power outage. Currently you have the Guardian plugged into the grid with this computer running, full screen music video while the battery is charging. All I have to do is flip the switch and see what happens. Three, two, one. It beeps. Music video continues to play. That's no problem. Here, the relay kick back on. Music video is still going. That's a pass. So if you're 120 volt charging this and running 240 volt appliances, you cannot, it will not let you do that. So no 240 volt output while charging at 120. Now as for the other way around, I'm unable to test because they didn't supply the cables. The 12 volt output on this on both sides is regulated at 12.8 volts. So the car port socket on this rated at 10 amps, we're able to pull 10 amps and it still was able to do it at 11.7 volts, that's a pass. I could not test the 30 amp XT90 output as they did not supply a cable. As for the USB output of the power delivery port, that was able to pull 140 40 watts, that was a pass. Amp interference test, is the inverter in this clean or dirty? I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the AC inverter. Let's see if it's clean or not. Definitely clean on that side. Let's try the other side. Yep, both sides are clean, that's a pass. EMF test, with all wireless turned off via switch, the DC output only came out in low teens, which is good. When I turned on the AC inverter, it hit 85 to 90, which is high, but typical for a six kilowatt inverter. Now I did hook up the extra battery to this to see if the screen calibrates. Here are the results of that. So we have a fully charged Guardian with the extra battery. We need to know if you hook up the extra battery, does it recalculate? So. Extra battery is charged about 50%. This is charged at 100. Let's plug in the cable and find out. There's your answer. It's showing the extra battery hooked up, but it's still showing 100%. It's not recalculating the fact that the battery is not fully charged. So that was kind of a bummer. That didn't work out. This product does support remote access through the Opus app via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and you can manually turn off the wireless transmitters with this button. So you don't have to go do any special clicking or nothing like that. Push one button, wireless is turned off. And as for the app itself, it's a basic one page app. It's not worth spending any time on. All results did fall within expectations, at least close enough to count them as all passing. So what do I think about the Guardian 6000. Well, let's just get this out of the way right now. That idle consumption of 73 watts sucks. That means adding 73 watts to every appliance you plug in. That 60 watt laptop now becomes 133 watts. That fridge during a blackout now burns 73 watts when the compressor isn't even running. For high wattage appliances, that's not a big deal. But for home backup, which is what this is designed for, you're usually running smaller loads for very long periods of time, overnight, possibly days. And that 73 watts really adds up fast. Reality is that an inverter of this size should be in the 40 to 50 watt range or even better when it comes to consumption. So. I don't know what happened here. Also, this thing has 2021 levels of loud. And what I mean by that is that the major brands had issues with loud fans up until about two or three years ago. The Guardian seems to be a bit behind the times when it comes to using larger heat sinks and smart fan technology to keep those decibels down. Is this a major issue? Unless you're sleeping in the same room with it, probably not. But folks using this in their RV or potentially in their bedroom during a power outage needs to be aware that this is one of the loudest over four kilowatt home backups out there. And some of the noises it makes, especially the zappy, crackly lightning bolt sounds can be kind of unnerving. Granted, it ran fine. It didn't smell funny at max loads. I had no actual problems with it. It's just making itself clear that it is a value-based product. Other disappointments include no 240 volt output when charged from 120 volts. This is something other power stations have overcome in recent years. The battery percentage display doesn't recalibrate when connected to external batteries. That's a pretty big deal for a home backup system because if you have 100% charge on your power station, you plug in a 50% charge battery, this should say 75%, instead it says 100. Obviously that's an issue if you need an accurate countdown of remaining runtime before your fridge dies. The other major brands, with the exception of Jackery, seem to have figured this out years ago. Also, not including the XT90 cable for the DC output was definitely an oops. Finally, the app. Not a fan of the entry level design. And the fact they rename it to something obscure that I can never remember. In this case, it's Cleanergy or Clenergy or Clean Energy. 
it's a fail. Why the name change? It sounds more like some corporate buzzword, some try-hard middle manager would use in a meeting trying to show off, rather than an app for a power station for a brand called Opez, a brand that most people already can't pronounce or spell correctly. The big question is, do these oversights make Guardian a bad product? Heck no! The 6000 did pass all the tests with flying colors. Everything worked as it should, at least up to the very edge. Be aware the limits on this product are hard limits not to be exceeded. It's a bit noisy, both in decibels and on the EMF meter, but it certainly does the job and is well-rounded from AC, DC, USB outputs, you got it all. The vast AC output selection is something other manufacturers should copy. I always wondered why, especially on these bigger 240 volt models, why do they always skimp on the outlets? They never seemingly want to include the one that you need the most in a pinch, including a 30 amp DC output at this price point with a switch that you could select between 12 and 24 volts without going into an app is fantastic. It's a feature other brands charge extra for. That's a win. 140 watt USB, again, a win. The fact they give you a physical button to turn on and off the wireless transmitter Major win for the tinfoil hat wearers. In the app, one of the very few features it has in there is the ability to have the wireless turn on automatically at boot or not. Excellent, give customers the choice. So the final say is that they're including a lot of extra features you rarely, if ever, get elsewhere in a value product. That is no oops, it's a big fat W especially when it comes to price. Now, what about that price? It's more affordable than you probably think. In fact, Opez has kept the current Black Friday pricing going all the way through Christmas Day 2025. This 4.6 kilowatt hour power station with crazy six year warranty is currently on sale for only $16.99. That's 36 cents per watt hour, and that just beats the crap out of most of the competition in the large home backup power station segment. Those other guys are still charging 50 cents or more per watt hour for their large flagship products. Not only that, but since this is over three kilowatt hours, it qualifies for the soon to expire 30% federal tax credit. This is basically your last chance to claim this credit before it expires at the end of this year. That essentially makes the Guardian 6000 under 1200 bucks or fewer bucks than Santa has used for his sleigh over the past 150 years. Think about that. So if you're interested, the link is in the description of this video. I'm also gonna put a link here on the screen. You can type in along with a QR code that you can scan if you're watching me on TV. It'll take you on over to the Opez store page where you can check out the Guardian 6000 of forever. Thanks for watching and until next time. What are you? I am the guardian of forever. Are you machine or being? I am both and neither. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box.